The Academic Staff Union of Universities threatens to start another strike today over federal government's failure to meet its demands. The President of the Union will be speaking with us this morning. And the Borno State Government and Elders ag agree to accept hundreds of Boko Haram members who have renounced the group. Also, away from insecurity challenges, let's talk movies now. Of course, Kemi Adetipa produced King of Boys debuts and, of course, has created loads of conversations across uh, social media here in Nigeria. A lot of excitement also. And with that, we say good morning and welcome to a Tuesday morning's edition of The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. I am Osao Gie Ogbonwa. Great to have you join me. And, of course, I'm a lone ranger again today until Aneta is a... Uh, uh, fully back to work. Thanks for joining me. I'll start with the top trending stories uh, across Nigeria uh, that we're sharing with you today. I'll start first of all with the ASU strike. It's uh, another uh, conversation that we're getting into and very likely we will be joined this morning by the ASU president um, who will be um, you know, joining us well, to share uh, his uh, views on the threats to once again go on strike. The um, association has given the Nigerian government till today, Tuesday 31st of August, uh, to, of course, um, address their demands or go back on strike. Um, the message from the ASU chairman basically says that the federal government has stopped taking their calls and has completely ignored their demands that were signed in the Memorandum of Action, the Memorandum of Understanding. If you remember not long ago, you know, they had one of the longest strikes on record and that was eventually called off when they, um, you know, signed some memorandum of action with the federal government um, about about 22 billion naira that was meant to be paid, revitalization fund and some of all of that. And also the controversy concerning the IPPIS and UTAS. But the ASU chairman says that the federal government, since that agreement was signed, has ignored the, the body and, of course, hasn't um, you know, gone through and uh, played its part in the agreement that was signed. And so they are threatening that they might once again return to the strike from today. Hopefully we get some clarity on what the situation is and, you know, if there have been, you know, somehow, somewhere, any conversations between the federal government and ASU in the last uh, few months. It's really, really frightening for a lot of Nigerians, and that's uh, some of the comments that I've seen. A lot of people begging ASU to please let them, you know, go to the next level in their universities. Please let us graduate. Please, you know, hold on so we can at least finish, you know, our 300 level or, so, you know, 200 level or whichever one that they are in. And those are some of the comments, you know, that I've seen um, in reaction to this. There's those who have completely just, you know, given up hope concerning, uh, you know, schooling in Nigeria, going to university in Nigeria. And you can't blame them. A four-year course in Nigeria, um, you, you know, what people would say is that if you're taking a four-year course, expect to finish it in six years because of the strikes here and there. Um, we've spoken extensively about the government's investment in education and the interest, really, of the Nigerian government in education. There are certain things that should be top priorities for every government. Education definitely is one of them. Healthcare, infrastructure. Um, and if you're thinking about what the, the country hopes to achieve in the next five years, in the next ten years, what is its, its developmental plan, what is its plan for its, uh, its young people, education should be one of those things that should never be joked with. Um, do you think that ASU is asking for too much? Do you think that they're maybe being too, you know, stubborn-headed? Um, you know, that's a totally different conversation. But it's once again another, you know, discussion on how the Nigerian government, same with what we talked about yesterday concerning the Nigerian Medical Association. Pretty much the same, you know, thing. How the Nigerian government signs agreements, gets into memorandum of understanding, so, you know, a strike can be called off and then just completely goes to sleep. There is no action taken after that, that agreement is signed. There is no you know, further discussions and, and some of all of that. And eventually you hear about a new strike. The NMA, the NARD, you know, pretty much the same you know, situation. And that's you know, really one of the things that um, we very likely will be talking about today. Why does that happen? Why does the government sign this memorandum of, of action? Um, what is the you know, bureaucracy around this? You know, what exactly makes it difficult for them to be able to fulfill the promises made to these bodies? And then we can also deep, you know, dig deeper and see how ASU itself and the NARD and some of the other bodies across the country that might be threatening strike 
can you know also find a way to balance things out to find a way to understand you know that this is um where nigeria is maybe the country can't afford some of all these things um you know maybe you know they need to give the government more time it's really really you know tiring for a lot of nigerians we're currently dealing with a health you know system where a lot of people can't get proper health care in the hospitals because doctors are on strike well resident doctors are on strike how are we going to add that to students being sent home because, well, ASU is on strike. Um, how much of this torture, it's mentally draining for a lot of Nigerians who really just want to make it, you know, to the next level in life. And that's really what it is. You know, they just want to make it to the next level in life. They just want to be able to go to the hospital and get treatment. They just want to go to university and get a degree after four or five years and continue with their lives. But when you take two years, you take a whole year out of a person's um, educational journey, because of one strike or the other, it makes it harder for the average Nigerian. There's a lot of people who are emigrating, moving to a different country entirely, struggling, borrowing money so that they can get, you know, to be um, able to afford school fees in a totally different country or in a private university. You can imagine what parents have to deal with to be able to fund their, their children, three, four kids through private universities, simply because they don't want to deal with some of all the strikes that, um, you know, that, that uh, Nigerian um, government universities um, experience. So it's, it's, it's tiring. And I'm sure every single Nigerian feels this way, both, you know, ASU and people, you know, in the federal government's um, side, and of course the students and parents. It is tiring that we have to keep dealing with this. But hopefully, um, there is no strike. Hopefully, you know, these calls for strike could be adver averted. Let's see what the conversation is like today when we speak with the uh, ASU chairman sometime on the breakfast uh, this morning. Also, something else that is trending, and I'll, I'll go to a little bit of, um, you know, entertainment now, and that is Kemi Adetiba's King of Boys. That is currently the most talked about movie across Nigeria. Nothing else, you know, beats that. I don't think there's any other conversation concerning movies that isn't King of Boys. Um, um, also, well, because of the first one that came out and then the sequel that was released a few days ago, it is phenomenal, according to what everyone has described. The cast, the acting, every single detail of it. There have, of, of, of course, been criticism here and there, but... Um, you know, it, it cannot overweigh or, you know, um, you know, be more than the praises that the movie has gotten. Kemi Adetipa has also spoken with regards piracy and how, you know, she fears that the movie might also be pirated. And Nigerian, um, you know, actors and movie producers may not get, uh, you know, every single penny that they should get because of pirates, which is, you know, a sincere concern. And it's... Um, it's something that we've heard about for a very, very long time concerning movies, uh, you know, movie producers, even, you know, in the music industry. And that really is one of the reasons that we've seen it, a shift in the way that music sales are carried out here in Nigeria. Um, we don't have the regular format that you might see in a totally in a different country where albums are released and they can swear that they've sold 500,000 copies or they've sold a million copies or 5 million copies. In Nigeria, it's a totally different picture. And the same thing with movies. But... I feel, you know, we're, it's a work in progress. There's still a lot of, you know, tightening loose ends here and there, um, you know, in the industry. And as long as we continue to put out great works like The King of Boys, then, you know, in some time, hopefully in the next year, hopefully in the next three, four, five years, we'll get to a place where piracy is no longer an issue. But congratulations to the cast, congratulations to Kemi Adetiba. Um, and we hope, you know, that she continues to make great, great blockbuster movies, just like The King of Boys. If you haven't seen it, you probably should go check it out. All right, also on our top trending stories for today, and this one, back to politics. Aisha Yusufu, one of the conveners of the Bring Back Our Girls group, um, two days ago, I believe, um, once again put out her statements concerning the, the similarities between the APC and the PDP. It's not the first time that we've seen you know, her make such statements, and she's not the only one. A few other people have also made so, such similarities. But in the last two days, it has come with a lot of response, a lot of backlash from people who um, have basically said, stop, mostly because they don't agree that these two political parties are one and the same. Um, so, some of the analysts that we've also interviewed or spoken with on this platform have mentioned that, you know, that it's simply um, two political parties that have been used as platforms, you know, you know to, for politicians to jump um, from one to the other and, of course, achieve their political um, goals. 
um, which, yes, a lot of people would agree with. They've also said that, you know, if you look at the current APC or the current PDP, you can basically see a lot of people who were in this other party two years ago are now in this one. And it basically means that it's the same thing. And that, I believe, is Aisha Yusufu's argument. But the response that I've seen from lots of people have basically said, stop it, because it's obviously not true. And the reasons they give is because the times, yes, you might say the two political parties, you know, people basically jump from one to the other, but the energy, the governance, the respect for the rule of law, the respect for, for leadership, and some of all those little details here and there, since 1999 until 2015, were completely different from what we're currently experiencing in Nigeria. They say to Aisha Yusufu, you are currently sharing this message with a VPN, <laughs> not even freely. Some of the campaign that, you know, made you popular as a person, and that mostly is the Bring Back Our Girls campaign um, on the former president, Good Luck Jonathan, um, when the Chibok girls were kidnapped. Some of all those campaigns have gone under. You, you never, you know, you, when is the last time any of you was out in the streets freely protesting? Those are some of the things that they've pointed out. And of course, also pointed out the ban on Twitter, the, you know, government's move concerning cryptocurrency, and some of all the, you know, other moves and said, do you imagine that if we were, if the same government rather was in power since 1999, do you think we would have gotten to where we are today with regards, you know, information technology, telecoms, and some of all those things? Um, and they've argued completely against that and said that it's very likely that the current Nigerian government wouldn't have allowed the, allow, the um, level of growth that, we, that, that Nigeria witnessed um, since 1999 with regards to telecommunications and in, in IT and, of course, um, some you know, basic infrastructure. Um, those are some of the strong points. Um, someone also pointed out Deja Deonju and um, the difference between Deja Deonju and Dawisu. If you remember, Dawisu used to work for the Kano state government, I believe. Deja Deonju was one of the fiercest critics of former President Goodluck Jonathan. And he said that during that time, Deja Deonju was still freely, you know, protesting and sharing his views, condemning the government every now and then. But Dawisu, who tried it in the current administration, was kicked out and eventually had to leave Nigeria. And there's many, many of these examples of people who tried to critic the current administration and didn't survive it. Um, if you remember also, um, there's a particular guy who's been missing for, for more than a year now, uh, somewhere in Kaduna, can't remember his name. So these are some of the points that people have made in response to that argument, that the two political parties are one and the same. Um, and they've said it's absolutely not true. Some other thing that I've seen that people mention is that this is a conversation. And if you see most of the people making this conversation, you would see a lot of people countering it from the PDP side, but you would you know, see silence from the APC side. And they've said that this is because in order to keep the APC in power beyond 2023 um, is important to draw similarities between the two parties so that Nigerians can say, well, there's really no need bringing back the PDP. Well, because they are one and the same. So why don't we just continue with the APC's candidate or continue with, you know, whoever, whatever it is, uh, programs that the APC is bringing forth. And that is one of the things that I've seen people point out, that that is um, a very, very sleek and tricky way to ensure that you basically convince Nigerians they're, that they're one and the same party and there's no need to change. Um, it's a lot of interesting political discussions. You probably need to look out for it on social media. Um, the conversation concerning, you know, the APC and the PDP, are they one and the same? But, you know, one thing that I also, you know, um, I read is someone saying, if you really feel, you know, if you're really being honest with yourself, um, think about governance from 1999 to 2007, all the way till 2015. Think about the way that the Nigerian government felt, the freedom to express yourself, the freedom to criticize, somehow, some way. Yes, there are things that should be pointed out also, um, uh, the OD massacre and some other, you know, uh, places here and there that, you know, government basically went on to clamp down on, on um, what they felt were threats to the Nigerian state. But think about how the country basically was growing according to these people at that time, and compared with what we're seeing today, compared with the price of goods in the market, compared with, you know, the government's high-handedness, compared with, you know, the, the recklessness with which uh, um, security agencies carry out their, their activities. Now we hear about the EFCC barging into hotel rooms, you know, and arresting people, you know, randomly. Now, of course, we heard about SARS. We heard about, you know, there's so many of these issues that the government has failed to address. And those are some of the points that they've made to, you know, basically 
you know, push their, you know, their argument that the P uh, PDP is a completely different party from the APC. Even if you might argue that, yes, the same politicians here and there, but the energy, the governance was totally different. That's our <laughs> final top trader story this morning. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, Chris Wander will be joining us with Off the Press. We'll, uh, of course, go through the major news stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning and share with you. Stay with us. <laughs> 